So I'm here in Arizona with Dmitry Velikovsky, who is the head curator at the Bersman Neurological Museum, Russian Academy of Science in Moscow. And that's in Moscow. And Dmitry is a obviously a mineralogist and a geologist, and he has a knowledge, uh, an extremely rarefied knowledge of laboratory-grown crystals. And the purpose of this video is primarily to talk about laboratory-grown hydrothermal quartz. And quartz is grown in a superheated water solution that's saturated with silica. Yes, and alkaline solution. Right, using a seed plate of quartz and then the crystal grows. But what I'd love to show um, you is some examples, some really remarkable examples of grown quartz. And you can see the amazing crystal structures. We'll show you some more later but they're pretty much able by experimentation to grow a great variety of hydrothermal quartz crystals. And the difference is if they wish to, they can grow them in an extraordinarily perfect manner, which is suitable for electronics. And of course, natural quartz crystals don't have a perfect molecular lattice, so they can't be used with a perfect reliable frequency resonance and so they're not used in watches or oscilloscopes or other electronics that use crystals. Now by adding a metal oxide, um, is it potassium for amethyst? No, is it iron? It's for iron amethyst. for amethyst. And a huge amount of amethyst that is seen in jewellery, in uh, especially high-end jewellery, rings, stones and pendants, will be laboratory grown amethyst because the jewellers cannot tell the difference and it's much less expensive in the higher color range. If it's got a lot of inclusions and it's low-grade amethyst, it probably came from Brazil. Now the, um, the blue is colorized with cobalt, so they add a little bit of cobalt, that's yeah, correct? cobalt nitrate. Cobalt, mm -hmm. cobalt nitrate? Mm -hmm. Right, and so here's an example of a, a crystal. Now you'll notice that they're all different shapes, and that primarily relates to the seed plate design, right? Is that correct, mm -hmm. yes. Dimitri? So this is another spectacular, stunningly clear quartz crystal. And so we'll move away from these phenomenal shapes. Look at that piece, incredible. Now, you've probably seen in the background here, this amethyst cluster, and that would fool me, and I would say that's definitely a naturally grown quartz but of course it's not it, it is not yeah. it's not and the the area is about how, how far from Moscow 80 miles from Moscow where the factory is yeah maybe a hundred miles uh -huh. and this is a result of the leftover military industrial complex in the Cold War period when the Russians were putting a lot of expense into the military economy in Russia and uh, so you can see a variety of rainbow colors. The only color that they cannot grow, that I know of anyway, is red. They, they're able to grow pink, but not red. And uh, here's an ametrine sample here. And when they make ametrine by radiating the center part of the amethyst, and it changes its purple color to a sort of a, you just see a light brown there. But... Um, stunning stunning collection of allowing the laws of mother nature or physics to create perfect at the molecular lattice level perfect crystals um, we'll move over here's a great double terminated sample really really uh, spectacularly clean and again, it's that, that extraordinary lack of inclusions and crystal fractures that allows them to be used in electronics. Just move over to one more display over here. Really, words can't describe this cluster. Absolutely stunning. And uh, looks like it just came out of a Mine in Arkansas. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. And the, the base of it is just a microcrystalline structure. 
And, that uh, one is uh, made by in, yeah, in Cleveland. A lot, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio, by the right. person who we used think. to work in uh, South Europe. He's doing in that in his garage. Quite a job. Yeah. Managed to get a bit of a brain drain by taking some brilliant Russian scientists and inheriting them in America. And companies like General Electric and other uh, high tech companies have managed to hire their, these crystal growers who have such a background of amazing knowledge. And again, that's a fabulous quartz crystal grown in a lab and you'd never think it, absolutely never think it. And uh, there's some very unusual. It's unusual. another example, interesting yep, one uh, that's uh, relatively good amethyst specimen. And uh, the seed, that's the piece of uh, natural rock, quartzite, from uh, amethyst locality, where amethyst is uh, uh, much weaker by color. But uh, that piece of quartzite was, um, uh, they got it into outer cloth, and uh, small quartz grain serves as the seeds. And so we're getting the druse of amethyst grown in after cloth uh, from natural quartzite piece. Here is a stunning display, probably nothing that I know of, comparable in America at least, to all the variety. Some. Absolutely Some. amazing. Oh yes, look, look at the citrine. Again, I mean, completely looks natural. Completely looks natural. Well, Dimitri, thank you so much for your time and above all, spending all the hours setting up this amazing display. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much. So we just watched a wonderful video with Dimitri Velikovsky from Moscow explaining some of the wonderful characteristics of laboratory-grown crystals. And the objective of showing those crystals was to explain how fantastically perfect the crystal structures can be compared to what nature can offer and here you have a lovely girl wearing a frequency bangle which is made of deeply colored quartz crystals that have been faceted in a way where, that touch the skin to enhance the individual's electrical field it's been a field of research we've done for many years we've got many designs for different reasons different individuals different body mass, etc. It's been an ongoing research project. We've been researching the influence of different types of crystal material on individuals for over 30 years now, full time, with a staff of three. And Astro Gems and Frequency Bangles has been pursuing with great interest how crystal energy can influence the electrical body and the consciousness, the mind, uplift the person's karmic pattern. This is a large oval frequency bangle and you can see the colors of the gems radiated by sunshine through them, allowing for the perfect geometrical alignment of the molecular crystal structure to give a perfect spectral effect of light. And it's not dissipated by the incandescent effect of a amorphous structure. These are genuine crystals at a molecular level. And we also make them with pure silver and pure metal. We found that pure metals, certain pure metals, are very strengthening to our biofield. And we've been given great hints of reference on what works by a formidable yogi from India called Paramahansa Yogananda. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Again, here's another picture with wonderful strong spectral colors emanating from the geometrically aligned molecular lattice of the faceted colored quartz crystals. With frequency bangles, we offer a 31-day money-back guarantee because they are still relatively expensive, nothing compared to natural gemstones, but it's important to us that the person's happy that buys it and feels they've made a good investment. And with the internet, you really don't know what you're getting sometimes in this type of field. So it's important that we give an individual karmically the right comfort zone for making a judicious decision with a low risk result. There's a lot of videos on our website to 
explain to the viewer the different people's reactions. Nikolai Tesla had a fantastic quote. If you want to find the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency and vibration. That's pretty much it for what we find, how the crystals interact with our consciousness field, with our well-being field, with our electric body. Wherever there's electricity, there's always frequency. One cannot exist without the other. Frequency being a vibration wave and very much being a significant part of the fabric of human form and the universe. I mean, it's all one and the same, as Tesla said. Here's a variety of designs that we've made. This is just some of the many designs for different reasons that we have designed and continue to do so. We're continually working on comfort and engineering the strength. It's a ongoing process. Again, we saw some fantastic lab-grown crystals. I, I want to really explain that over 90% of the Earth's crust is composed of silicate minerals. That means uh, minerals are silicon and when you add oxygen it's silica. And so that's a very significant percent. With the advent of recognition for earthing and the electromagnetic fields that we need for optimum health, if over 90% of the Earth's crust is composed of silicate minerals, then definitely that somehow has a relationship, especially when man walked barefoot, to our electrical friendly environment. And you know, the silicate minerals have oxygen in them and other reactive metals, but accounting for about 90% of the mass of the Earth's crust is, makes quartz, which is a silicon dioxide, a very significant mineral that's part of our mineral home. That, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Here's some other stunning laboratory grown quartz specimens. And these are sold as specimens. There are mineral collectors who love to find incredibly high quality reflections of mother nature or physics in this case. This is a natural quartz cluster. and It's more obvious because there's probably a little trace of iron in the solution of the quartz allowing for that yellowish color. Here's a fantastic twin quartz crystal, completely stunning in its clarity and purity. And when I say purity, even with a lot of natural quartz crystals, there's a huge number of trace elements in the SiO2 silicate oxygen matrix of the tetrahedra. In my view, they disturb the frequency field. So laboratory grown quartz being so absolutely perfect is a homogeneous unit of frequency interaction. Here you see again a difference between a natural twin quartz and a laboratory grown on the right hand side. Just for reference, if you want to study natural quartz, the quartzpage.de is an excellent academic website that I recommend if people are interested in all the different types of crystal shapes that the crystal can grow in. Laboratory grown crystals isn't of course constrained to quartz. There are emeralds, sapphires, diamond. There's a lot of different methodologies for growing crystals. The difference is can it be done economically? Can it be done in a competitive manner to nature? And very often that's not the case. Here's an example of a laboratory grown emerald cluster, which sometimes gets sold as natural when they're not, and that's not uncommon at all. More examples of laboratory grown crystals, the ruby on the right. This is just a small sampling of types of crystals that can be grown, and by mimicking, imitating a natural environment in a way that doesn't disturb crystal growth. Quite a spectacular expression of human ingenuity to figure out how mother nature can grow its gems and crystals. Having said that, the great majority of slime materials are not grown as crystals and do not share the internal crystal lattice that nature or the laboratory grown crystals can provide. When I say by internal crystal lattice I'm talking about how the molecules align themselves in a geometrical pattern relating to that crystal characteristic. You can create an amorphous material which is like a chemical melt mix, like a glass-like material but using different chemicals 
that have some characteristics similar to their natural counterpart, such as hardness and even definitely color, but not the alignment of the molecular lattice. And that's what makes a crystal when the atoms intelligently join together in a geometrical alignment. It's a very, very nano level development and it makes crystals completely unique compared to so many other materials, wood, plastic, glass, etc. The top left hand picture here is a synthetic ruby bull that's not grown like a crystal and has no geometrical molecular lattice like a ruby would have. If you melt aluminium oxide at 2000 degrees Celsius with a little chromium oxide over a hydrogen flame, you can create synthetic red corundum, or crudely called ruby by those who don't really understand what a ruby is. And it's the same with the emerald we saw. Emerald is a brilliant aluminium silicate, colored green by trace amounts of chromium or sometimes vanadium, has a hardness 7.5 to 8 on the most scale. You can make materials that look fairly similar by the synthetic chemical melt process, the vanille process, but again if they do not have that hexagonal crystal lattice, they're very obviously not a crystal, they're very obviously not an emerald. This is a close-up of a vanille flame fusion synthetic red corundum. And here's an example of a grown ruby crystal. You couldn't sculpt a, such a crystal. It's so fine at the microscopic level when you're looking at how the molecules align on the surface of the crystal structure. To make matters more confusing, many salespeople erroneously call synthetics lab-grown crystals, when in fact they're just melted chemical, very much not lab-grown crystals. They are glass-like, amorphous, hard, attractive coloured, crystalline silicates, but they're not grown crystals. A synthetic on the left-hand side and lab-grown rubies on the right and bottom pictures. Compare them and you can see extremely obvious differences, but when you cut them and facet them, it's not so easy to tell the difference unless you're trained in gemology and understand how to do that. These are coloured quartz laboratory grown crystals on the lower left here and grown perfectly. The reason why man's developed the skill and need to grow crystals is because Mother Nature does not produce reliable perfect crystals at the molecular lattice threshold for electronics, for watch timepieces where they use piezoelectric quartz, for oscilloscopes, for lasers, a whole host of electronics. We've researched by extension using colored quartz instruments within the bioelectrical field for well-being enhancement and we've had fantastic results, very dramatic results. Here's an example of laboratory grown quartz crystals after the quartz crystals have been cut and faceted into gemstone shapes. These are some of the colors we would use in our frequency bangles. Do we thrive on full spectrum frequencies? Science has established beyond any doubt that all living cells are electromagnetic by nature. Electricity cannot exist without frequency. Electricity, which is a flow of electrons, cannot exist without a wave-like radiation, a frequency. Quantum physics has proven that all matter in its most basic fabric is actually composed of the electromagnetic frequencies of spectral light waves. Light has the ability to change its pattern, and that's when matter gets produced. Quantum physicists have done incredible research proving their theories, which seem far too esoteric for the layman back in the days of Einstein. At the end of the day, everything is energy, everything is light. There are many benign sources of external electromagnetic energy such as sunshine, food chemistry, planetary radiations, oxygen, earth currents, etc. And 80% of the brain is composed of astrocyte cells, which also contiguously tile the central nervous system. Now, astrocytes exert many complex functions and have the ability to generate electricity and also to produce pulsed frequencies with strong electromagnetic fields. Now, I say this because without them functioning, we're dead. And without electricity, we're dead. And without frequency, we don't have electricity. So if you have anything that interacts with the frequency field of the human in a beneficial manner, then there can be a positive shift in the individual's well-being and even outlook. And it's a very, very deep subject that I'd like to get into at a later date, but that's none the 
less the summary of it. NASA research has proven that the Earth has supportive frequency waves, which feed essential energy to humans, aiding their life force in an optimal manner. We'll get more into the resonance Schumann feel later. Our body electric has evolved to utilize frequencies of the Earth's atmosphere, the Schumann resonance, and the magnetic Earth itself for cellular stimulation and magnetic resonance. These dramatically enhance the chemical reactions and well-being of the body to help keep it disease-free. Harmonic instruments that gently interact with the electromagnetic spectrum to supplement the body electric and the astrocytical functions of the brain will become widely recognized in the future by modern science. And, you know, we're still at a stage where man really doesn't even understand what gravity is coming out of the Earth. There's different theories, and even though it's all around us, it's still not a fully understood field of science. At this stage of limited scientific evolution, the supplementary influences of correctly made crystal instruments that have contact with the electrical body are not recognized widely, except by those who've done personal experiential research to prove the theory of frequency supplementation and resonance to themselves, except for people who wear different types of crystal instruments to see if they feel better and benefit by wearing them. That's fairly straightforward. The trouble is, being a crystal instrument can be pricey, and consequently it's a very small section of the society that will take advantage of this opportunity. Though the world offers generous ridicule, we have been greatly inspired by supportive testimonial feedback and ongoing research for over 35 years full-time at astrogems.com. It's been a lot of fun. We've met a lot of remarkable people. I want to get into a little bit about the influence of the vibration quanta, the interaction quanta between matter. Quantum physics has shown that so-called vibration quanta, interaction quanta, especially photons, are superordinate to control matter. Nobel Prize winner Carlo Rubio succinctly summarized, we usually consider only matter because we can see it and touch it. However, much more important than matter particles are the interaction quanta, as these hold the matter together, determine or control their structures, and are far superior in numbers in the universe. According to the theory of Beheim, there are at least 100 million times more interaction particles that's particles without rest mass, than matter particles with rest mass, matter particles being atomic structures that we see, etc. The crystal radio was made popular in the early days of radio and required no battery to interpret radio waves. And here I'm explaining how a crystal that was joined to some parts of a radio became the central part of it that could measure radio waves, which are frequencies, and turn them into musical speech. The battery was only needed for amplification. In other words, the crystal radio didn't have a very loud amplification when it was able to interpret radio waves and relate them as musical speech. The crystal radio got its name from the most important component known as a crystal detector, which was not always made of quartz, could be galena, but can be made a quartz crystal as well. Our electrical body acts as amplifiers to the resonant abilities of the crystal-based frequency bangle. Our exciting research indicates that there are much more benign vibration quanta on this planet than radio waves, that the bangle can be a channel to the mind and the body electric. This is a very open field of study. It's a difficult study to give great credibility to because there simply aren't instruments to verify some of our findings. Putative energies include biofields which have not been quantifiably measured by a dominantly accepted scientific authority. No scientific study has been able to verify the existence of certain postulated biofields. Advanced yogis who have practiced and perfected mental and physical self-disciplines have shown evidence that transcends material and consciousness related limitations, attesting to a world of energy patterns and quantum logic beyond the ultra-limited measuring abilities of modern instruments.
Ayurvedic medicine believes that different energy fields called doshas are coursing through our bodies and must be maintained for optimum health, even though these biofields have yet to be scientifically verified. Therapists and patients who experience biofield enhancements say they can see and feel the energy being manipulated for positive results. And of course, out of China came the very well-known term of energy for qi, and other cultures have drawn similar conclusions by analyzing how to optimize health. Just for a perspective, when we're talking about the quanta of energy between mass, a hydrogen atom is the smallest atom of the periodic table. And it's in water, and it's quite a remarkable atom. And if you made the proton in a hydrogen atom the size of a basketball, that tiny spinning electron, which has many interesting characteristics, that would be in the outer atmosphere if that basketball size hydrogen proton was in the center of the Earth. And all that space between proton and electrons would be a force field matrix of energy, a vortex that would hold that hydrogen atom together. And the electron, if the proton is a basketball, the electron is so many times smaller than the proton, it's like a pinhead over 1835 times smaller according to some studies and then there's other studies that say actually we don't think the electron has mass that's still being postulated by the scientists crystals align these molecules so perfectly these tiny electrons surrounded by their, their electromagnetic signature in space are in perfect alignment join forces and amplify their tone of frequency energy the movement of negatively charged electrons is called electricity Electrons in a quartz crystal can move by pressure or thermal stimulation, which can increase frequency radiations, but not necessarily current. They've measured voltage on the surface of quartz crystals sometimes at over a thousand volts for a flash when it's been put under great pressure. And that just shows the constrained energy within a crystal. But Again, we're more interested in the frequency wave vibration. You do not have to have moving electrons to have frequency waves. Silicon crystals and solar cells generate photoelectricity via the sunshine as the electrons move into a current also. Here is an example of a, it's almost like a cartoon drawing of a crystal structure because obviously an atom isn't a round ball with a line going between it. This is kind of like the Meccano image of what a crystal lattice could look like, but you can still get the idea of the dramatic alignment of the electrons and the protons, etc. And when you see this, think of how the photons align in a laser beam, how powerful a laser can be, how dramatically powerful. Often used as a sapphire crystal, often used for the alignment of the electrons, of the photons, sorry, and can cut through steel. If you want to use a laser tool for cutting metals, lasers are extraordinarily powerful, but the principle is quite similar. This might sound like a quite a shift in subject matter, but this is a book written by Paramahansa Yogananda called Autobiography of a Yogi, who left his body in 1952 in America and told his immediate disciples, I'm going to die tomorrow pretty much and be prepared. I'm going to be talking about my life's satisfactions and he gave a talk to the ambassador of India at a public banquet, stopped his heart and then his body didn't decompose and showed absolutely no signs of decomposition in a normal temperature room for about 21 days. Time magazine had said it's the first time in their observation this had ever occurred in America, Los Angeles. Paramahansa Yogananda is an advanced yogi and I, I bring this up, I mention this because the yogis have discovered things about gemstones and crystals that I very much have been inspired by to keep doing my research on the benefits of gemstones and crystals. One of the things that Paramahansa Yogananda said was just as a house can be fitted with a copper rod to absorb the shock of lightning, so the bodily temple can be benefited by various protective measures. Ages ago, our yogis discovered that pure metals emit an astral light 
which is powerfully counteractive to negative pulls of the planets. Subtle electrical and magnetic radiations are constantly circulating in the universe. When a man's body is being aided, he does not know it. When it is being disintegrated, he is still in ignorance. Can he do anything about it? This quote was taken from the autobiography of a yogi. He goes into the subject of wearing metals and gemstones for the benefit of the individual. It's one of those books that is decades ahead of its time. He goes on to say, This problem received attention from our rishis. They found it helpful not only, to, not only a combination of metals, but also of plants, and most effective of all, faultless jewels of not less than two carats. One little known fact is that the proper jewels, metals or plant preparations are valueless unless the required weight is secured and unless the remedial agents are worn next to the skin. If that's true, that's an extraordinarily significant piece of information for mankind. And it's a science that is not well collated. It's a science that needs further research. And we've been delighted to have that profound privilege at astrogems.com. And here are some of the bangles that we've made for different reasons. And we've got fantastic results and feedback. Science explains that photons are continually bombarding the atoms in a crystal and that they increase the spin and exc excitation of the geometrically aligned electrons. The longer the alignment of the perfect molecular crystal lattice, the greater the radionic energy from the spin excitations, which are also radiating down the alignment. A crystal can allow for radiating emanation and storage of photons and other received radiations. Recent research has proven crystals can show a light-based memory that preserves quantum coherence, such as polarization and entanglement. Though this advance has been proven, we are still a while away from creating a quantum crystal-based internet that uses photons or some other kind of electromagnetic ray instead of electrical current. This is just to show where the development of crystal infrastructure and energy will be going in the future. Using electrons is actually quite a inferior method for something as wonderful as the internet. And the future of inventions will be quite remarkable using crystal energy and crystal characteristics. Astrogems and FrequencyBangles.com have been researching and creating crystal-based personal instruments that interact with one subtle electrical body for over 30 years. All consciousness and electricity has frequency. All consciousness has a vibration. All consciousness has an emanating feeling. And by harmonically supplementing the frequency field, one's karmic pattern, one's way of being, one's one's developed attitudes and outlook through vibratory magnetism can be greatly improved. Should we consider wearing deeply colored quartz crystal gem bangles? Every organism on Earth has evolved to magnetic signals coming from the solar system of planet Earth. The solar radiation that penetrates our atmosphere is also electromagnetic, but we also create our own internal magnetic storm from the reverberations of our thoughts, past action memory, habits of thought, and general karmic pattern. This in turn strengthens or weakens our happiness and higher consciousness potential. With these penetrating influences on an aging body and mind, we can often suffer much more than is necessary. We also need supplementing energy protection to our electrical body and mind as never before since we are weakened by the power grid, mobile phones and towers, computers, satellite, TV and radio towers, smart meters and a whole host of other non-bio-friendly influences. But most non-invasive aids such as pulsed magnetic therapy, ionized water, homeopathy, Reiki, aromatherapy, even pharmaceuticals that are effective often lead to only a temporary homeostasis or partial solution of inharmonious symptoms. Meditation, diet change, lifestyle improvements and positive affirmations can lead to long-term realignments to health. But these require a needed self-effort that may not be in our karmic pattern. Wearing gem bangles is a passive process 
that allows the coloured crystals to influence the mind without any conscious effort of the wearer. The uplifting influence of the deeply coloured crystals and pure metals will magnetically attract you to make positive changes in your life. Having said that, I don't want to make that a carte blanche, 100% every time statement. There are people that can wear frequency bangles who simply do not have the sensitivity to feel a shift or anything significant. And, and that's again why we offer the money back guarantee. However, we have a very high proportion of people who are amazed by what the frequency bangles do for their well-being. Conduction is a transmission of qualities between two materials without any change in the medium. Conduction is hypothesized to occur in many ways between materials such as crystals, but without conclusive instruments to prove such a hypothesis, some scientists struggle with the concept of conductive transcendence. Consciousness is not regarded as a scientific instrument on account of having such a wide and immeasurable range of expressed experience, but consciousness can measure consciousness to the individual's own yardstick. A person knows when they are elated or depressed, while others can only hear or feel a description of the same experience. It is for this reason that we have recorded the extensive feedback from many individuals and their experiences with crystal-based frequency bangles on the testimonial pages of our websites, frequencybangles.com and astrogens.com. And having said that, there are quite a few testimonials that I haven't put up because the claims enter the territory of the pharmaceutical and medical world that could be politically or legally incorrect. And I've got to be careful how I use the feedback from very amazed clients. Why are crystals so unique? Large crystals allow for billions of molecules to form in an intelligently grown geometrical alignment. When electrons align like photons in a laser beam, they have a unique ability to transfer an energy wave frequency down the crystal lattice. The same theory applies to magnets, but those electrons carry a spin orientation in the same direction in order to carry a charge for ferrous attraction. However, there are many forms of magnetism that interact with many kinds of frequency, still not discovered by man. People attesting to the benefits of crystals would be one example. About 75% of our brain and body is composed of water. Quartz, which is Si, silicon and oxygen, and water, which is hydrogen and oxygen, are both polymorphic and amorphous and crystallize, interestingly enough, in a hexagonal pattern. Polymorphic means can take many crystal forms and amorphous means can be without crystal structure. Perhaps there is a resonance relationship between different crystals that have the same geometrical crystal habit that also share one similar atom, such as oxygen. Resonance, the definition of, is an excited state of a stable particle causing a sharp maximum in the probability of absorption of electromagnetic radiation. That is a very deep and meaningful definition. Resonance is commonly referred to with sound where you pluck one guitar string in a room, say an E chord, and on the other E string on the other guitar at the other end of the room, it will start vibrating because it starts receiving the E chord sound vibration. So you have one sound wave physically moving a wire of the same resonance, the same chord, some feet away. It's a very, very important scientific theory to understand. It applies across many fields. When people meet another person that they have a lot in common with, they become friends. There's a resonance there. When people are moved into an environment that's very destructive, but they have a seed of that negativity in themselves, that negativity can be amplified. When they have a very positive seed in them and they go into a very high vibration environment, again, they can be reinforced and greatly helped. And that simple Resonance theory applies to high quality, deeply colored crystals, which have a very high quality 
resonant vibration. Over 90% of the Earth's crust is composed of silicate minerals. I touched on this earlier. Silica is the most abundant element after oxygen in the Earth's crust. Silica is most commonly found in nature as quartz, yet most quartz and water are magnetically held together at the molecular level with oxygen. Again, we cannot do enough justice to the resonance definition. And because ionized alkaline water has a greatly amplified number of health-giving negative ions, we found that our clients who drink this special water also have an amplified appreciation of the quartz space frequency bangles. We believe this is based on the relationship of resonance. We have also found that those who do not have a habit of good hydration are not as sensitive to the benefits of the frequency bangles as to those who are. And again, water and quartz have some relationships, we believe. So we're, we're putting in how important water is for our health. And here's examples of some hexagonal snowflakes. H2O in crystal form. Stunningly beautiful. And there's a message here, there's a meaning here, there's a relationship here to our well-being. And we have connected the dots as we see them with quartz, with silicon dioxide, which also has a hexagonal habit. Hexagonal meaning six-sided. As you can see in the center, that obvious seed plate shape forming the snowflake crystal. One of the solutions to chronic inflammation apart from acidosis and long-term mild dehydration has been discovered to be something right under our feet. Throughout most of human evolution we have walked barefoot, largely oblivious that the earth emits negative ions of great benefit just like crystals. These free-flowing electrons are constantly replenished by solar radiation and the earth's magnetic forces. Few realize the silica quartz rich Earth's crust provides electrical signals that maintain health and govern intricate mechanisms that make our bodies thrive. This stimulative battery source is debilitated by insulative rubber sole shoes and the electronic smog of so many electrical devices around us. Earthing instruments like quartz crystal frequency bangles introduce powerful and overlooked natural healing energy. This profound book describes how our physical disconnect with the earth creates abnormal physiology and contributes to fatigue, inflammation, pain, depression and poor sleep. By reconnecting to the earth via prolonged skin contact, symptoms can be rapidly relieved and even eliminated and recovery from surgery, injury and athletic overexertion is accelerated. One thing I'd like to touch on here is depression. We have been surprised by people who claim they have received much remedial influence to their depression by wearing the frequency bangle. Again, we don't make that claim. We offer a 31-day money-back guarantee. It's the safe way of helping people think and discover if it'll work for them. At FrequencyBangles.com we believe that for every chemical or molecular signal the brain or body has, there is always an equivalent electromagnetic frequency that is transmitted. And that when an imbalance exists, a corresponding subtle energy parallel frequency can be supplemented to bring the biofield back to homeostasis. And that this field of research will become a much larger part of the future of non-invasive medicine. We all understand how music can have a certain influence on the mind just as scenery can, just as human emotions can. So there's parallels of frequency between different types of material uh, subject matter. And moving along with that theory also, medical researchers working on bone fractures that were having problems mending discovered that they could send an electromagnetic signal to the fracture to stimulate rapid healing. It seems that the electromagnetic frequency was carrying the same message as the chemicals produced in the body. And so there's a, or was stimulative to the healing chemicals in the body. But there's still that resonance relationship that we mentioned earlier. Paramahansa Yogananda explained that disease will be treated more and more by rays, vibratory energy that can reach the electronic factors of the atoms, the building blocks of matter, where gross chemicals cannot penetrate. We believe that when the body interacts with low frequency influences, it is weakened 
and its electrical strength can be compromised. Kinesiology can prove this theory very convincingly. If you hold a large bowl of sugar and bring it into your aura, your muscles actually weaken and other reactions occur in your organ systems. And that's a science that is being proven for many decades now and is really quite fascinating if you have that experience. If a person is wearing an oil-based nylon clothing, their vitality will be sapped to a degree compared with pure cotton or silk. There is an interaction between their electrical body and the clothing which creates a change in the electrical body's frequency. Similarly, it is the body's electrical interaction with the quartz crystal based bangle that can elevate the energy threshold of the individual. As well as elevating the energy threshold, I want to say also increase prospectively the mental clarity. That's something that so many have witnessed and expressed. About 5% of the individuals have explained that when they first wore the frequency bangle they experienced a depletion of energy and even sometimes a disorientation to their normal well-being. However, after persevering with it for a few days or sometimes hours, they finally broke through to a surprise state of better well-being. They also discovered that drinking alcohol was much less pleasant when wearing it, wearing it as it would resist the lower transition of consciousness. What I'm saying is that there's an integration process when people put on the frequency bangle and for not everyone has a harmonious experience in the initial integration process. There's a shift that has to go on and if a person has certain flaws in their mental makeup then it's a battle and it's a transition and it doesn't necessarily mean that the healing process is going to be harmonious. However, for most people, I'd say 95% of people who wear it, it's great. And probably 30% of the people who wear it don't even feel the frequency bangle until they take it off about two weeks later. And then they notice that they go back to the consciousness that they remember they used to have. And they realize that the bangle is doing enormous good. Such phenomena may occur as not everyone is close to their optimum threshold of well-being and with a powerful instrument the integrating transition usually is, but not always, completely smooth. Integration can take a little time and can be done slowly in phases while the entrenched pattern of frequencies is slowly elevated. And going back several thousand years here, India has held a strong belief in the practice of wearing specific gemstones for health and improvement of social and spiritual conditions. One of the Vedic scriptures by the name of the Garuda Purana, which was written or first recorded to have been written in the 4th century, attributes great benefits to wearing certain gemstones for karmic protection, strength and health. This tradition has been followed throughout the Middle Ages in many cultures of the world, slowly falling away as man moved away from his natural environment and entered into the Industrial Age. However, it is still a continuing cultural practice in India to use gemstones for karmic protection. As a result, in India, in the Garuda Purana, they explain how particular gemstones reinforce and influence from particular planets and add a supplementary radiation strengthening a person's aura and karmic disposition. Here would be a chart explaining some of those meanings and relationship to the chakras. Everything is resonance and harmony and frequency and there's an interrelationship between those three that can optimize our electrical field. Here's a chart on the subject and of course you don't have to use specific gemstones. The color is a very strong influence in the efficiency of a gemstone for frequency supplementation. So in summary, I would just like to uh, say a few points. And all actions and thoughts have a vibratory frequency signature which either elevates or lowers the consciousness and health. This is essentially a reflection in a large part of our karmic pattern. There are many ways to achieve excellent mental and physical health. Positive thoughts, prayers, affirmations, visualization, will and cheerfulness stimulate the natural healing processes. 
along with healthful habits, proper eating, exercise, fresh air, sunshine, hygiene, physical and mental relaxation. But all these have to come from a seed of thought. The developed personality and character in the individual are weakened or strengthened by the company he keeps and the vibratory influences of his environment. By wearing a high, biofriendly, chromatically influential frequency bangle, our vibratory nature is subtly elevated to magnetically want to pursue higher vibration activities and thoughts. This is what we've continually discovered. This is what other individuals of gemstone touching jewelry have also witnessed around the world. Of the thousands of individuals who have purchased multi-crystal based arm bangles, a commonality of feedback indicates a dramatic lessening in negative behaviors such as pessimistic thoughts, doubt, lack of confidence, fear patterns, infidelity, junk food, too much television, oversleeping, lack of exercise, lack of interest in spiritual matters. And the li list goes on, but again, we continually hear a repetition of commonality in this area. For more information on this subject, feel very welcome to visit the testimonial pages of FrequencyBangles.com and astrogems.com. Thank you very much for watching this video. It's been a pleasure putting it together. There's so many more interesting insights that we would love to share and we hope to with our other videos. Thank you. It is extremely comfortable. It feels like another layer of skin. It really does help to ground me. It keeps me focused, grounded, and in my body.